Hey guys, Mr. Black here. Um, I'm back to teach you guys a little bit more about uh, like circular motion. Notice my mustache is gone. I shaved it off. I spent a lot of sleepless nights uh, figuring out if I was gonna do it or not. But after lots of contemplation and uh, you know, you know, time thinking about it, I decided it was time to go. And I feel like a new man. I look like a new man. So let's go ahead and get started on uh, some circular motion here. <laughs> Alright, so starting off, um, we've already kind of talked a little bit about uh, circular motion in class, so you should know some of the, these words already, but we're going to go over them in a little bit more detail and look at the, what their equations are going to be, okay? So this first one is tangential velocity, okay? And so tangential velocity changes direction as the object moves around a circular path. So the tangential velocity is always wanting to go in a straight line. So if you see on this uh, circle here, our tangential velocity are these red arrows. They're always wanting to go in a straight line, no matter which uh, part of the circle they're on, they're always wanting to go on a line tangent to the circle um, that it's touching at that point, okay? Our equation here um, is gonna be uh, changed a little bit from the equation that we already knew for velocity, right? Ve velocity is displacement divided by a change in time. So what we've got here is our tangential velocity is our displacement, which would be um, our circumference here, right? So two pi r, so two pi and the radius of the circle uh, divided by big T, which big T in this case means the time that it takes to make one full circle. Or another word for that would be um, what we call uh, the period of the circle, right? So that's, that's the title of what that is called. Big T is the period of the circle, the amount of time it takes to make one full circle. All right, so that's our equation for tangential velocity. Um, the next two uh, kind of vocabulary words or phrases that we're going to talk about are net force, which is something we should already remember, um, but our net force or um, centripetal force in this case is always pointing towards uh, the center of the circular path. So as an object's moving in a circle, the net force or centripetal force is always pointing towards the center of the path, right? And this is an unbalanced force that causes centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration um, is also pointed towards the center of the circle as the object moves around um, our circular path here. Um, and so our equation for centripetal acceleration is going to be uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to our tangential velocity uh, squared divided by the radius of the circle. And you can see that centripetal acceleration is represented by these blue arrows because it's always pointing towards the center of the circle no matter where we are um, on the circle, right? That's that's tangential or uh, centripetal acceleration, sorry. So let's look at a problem here um, that this first one is more uh, has to do with uh, uh, tangential velocity. So um, during their physics trip uh, to an amusement park, Tyler and Maria took a ride on the whirly gig. The whirly gig ride consists of long swings which spin in a circle at relatively high speeds. As part of their lab, Tyler and Maria estimate that the riders travel through a circle with a radius of 6.5 meters and make one turn every 5.8 seconds. Determine the velocity of the riders on the whirly gig. All right. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to set up our guess method. I've got it down here. Um, we need to find our givens first. So if we look back in the problem, it looks like they gave us uh, the radius of the whirly gig was uh, 6.5 meters and that the uh, period or big T, uh, it makes one turn every 5.8 seconds. So it completes one full circle every 5.8 seconds. And our unknown, it's asking us to determine the tangential velocity of the riders on the, on the whirly gig. So if we look here, we've got tangential velocity, we've got our uh, radius, and then we've got big T, we've got the, the period. So if we looked at our equations, um, that we have available to us, it looks like the equation for tangential velocity is probably going to be the one we want to use because we're given radius, we're given uh, the period, and that's all we really need in order to solve for tangential velocity. So we'll go ahead and plug in our numbers into this equation here. 
Um, and what we should end up getting is uh, our, let's see, that our velocity is going to be 2 times pi times 6.5, right, because we plug that in for the radius, divided by the period, which is 5.8, um, and that's going to equal 7.9 meters per second, because again, this is velocity. So we got to remember that this is velocity here, and it's got the units are meters per second, all right? Okay, so our next uh, our next word problem here is a uh, rock with a mass of 20 kilograms is tied to a string and is moving at a constant speed of eight meters per second uh, in a circle of radius seven meters. All right, calculate the appro uh, approximate magnitude of the centripetal acceleration on the rock. So first things first, let's figure out what our givens are. So if we look here, oh, I'm moving them down a little bit, but that's okay. So our mass was 20 kilograms. Our uh, velocity, our speed, was 8 meters per second, and the radius was 7 meters. So that's what we were given in the problem. And then our unknown, what we're looking for here, it's asking us to calculate the centripetal acceleration of the rock. So based on what we have and what we're looking for, um, our best uh, fit for the equation here would probably be this one. Uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. So we'll plug in everything that we have here into our equation. If you'll notice, we don't really need this mass. Sometimes they're gonna give you, uh, in problems, they're gonna give you more information than you need. So if you look here, that mass doesn't really fit into this equation here, um, so we're not gonna use it. So we're just gonna use this tangential velocity and the radius, and we'll plug that into our equation. And what we should get is it's eight squared uh, divided by seven, and that's going to give us our centripetal acceleration, which is 9.14 meters per second squared. All right, so let's look at this last one. So the last one has to do with centripetal force. So um, it's asking us to calculate the centripetal force required to make a 10 kilogram toy car move nine meters per second in a circle with a radius of four meters. So again, we're going to use the guess method here. Uh, first things first, we're going to figure out what our givens are. Uh, the mass was 10 kilograms. The, the tangential velocity was 9 meters per second. I know that because of the units here. I know that that's going to be our velocity. And then uh, the radius is 4 meters. So I know I have my information. I have my givens. It's asking us to calculate the centripetal force. So that's my unknown. That's what I'm looking for. Um, our equation that we're going to use is going to be this one right here. That centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object times the uh, velocity, the centripetal velocity, or the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Um, and if you'll notice, this equation looks a lot like our force equals mass times acceleration that we used last semester. The only thing that's different is that we replaced the acceleration with velocity squared divided by the radius. And if you remember when we went back uh, in the last problem, our centripetal acceleration is equal to this uh, this symbol right here. So we've got, basically we just replaced our acceleration with that last equation that we had. So it's it really should look pretty familiar. The only difference is, is that we changed that centripetal acceleration out with this expression right here. So coming over here, we're gonna use this equation. So we're gonna use our, centrip our centripetal force is equal to mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. And then we're gonna go ahead and substitute our numbers in, right? We've got our mass was 10, our uh, velocity, tangential velocity was nine, so we square that, divided by four. Once we plug that into our calculator, um, we should end up getting about 202.5 newtons, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it for you guys. I